Hello everyone and welcome to Edusearch Clinics. I am Dr. Gunjan Desai and today we are going to discuss a very important trial that has recently been published. It is on colon cancer, especially stage 3 and that is the Dynamic 3 trial which discusses the role of circulating tumor cell DNA and its guidance in taking selection of patients for adjuvant therapy. So if you have seen our previous video on trials on colon cancer, this is very important slide that you need to remember for managing the patients of stage 2 or 3 colon cancer. Basically in stage 3, the current recommendation is almost all patients get adjuvant therapy, whereas in stage 2, only high-risk patients get adjuvant therapy. Important point is that we don't give chemo if the patient is MSI high, right? 5-FU resistance is present in these cases and the administration of chemotherapy can lead to worsening of 5-year overall survival. The regimens are Folfox, Capox, adjustments in duration as well as drugs is done as per various criteria like omitting oxaliplatin in stage 2 or greater than 70 years old which is as per the Mosaic trial. Low risk stage 3 that is T1 to T3 and N1, whereas high risk stage 3 is T4 and or node 2. Okay, so in these cases, the chemotherapy regimens will differ where we have 3 months versus 6 months in low risk, that is the IDEA trial, whereas in high risk, you have full 6 months of KPOX and FOLFOX. So now, building on this data, the upcoming trials are focusing a lot on circulating tumor DNA and we will look at the various trials that are ongoing when it comes to colon cancer. This particular article was published in Nature in October 25 and it is basically to analyze the role of circulating tumor DNA guided adjuvant therapy in stage 3 colon cancer. So when it comes to the study design, this is a stage 3 colon cancer after R0 resection. No synchronous colorectal cancer should be present. The patient should be fit for at least a fluoropyrimidine and a staging CT should have been done within 12 weeks. Now after surgery, that is R0 resection, in week 5 or week 6, you have to send a sample for circulating tumor DNA analysis. Now. Understand that if you don't know much about CT DNA, we can have a separate small video on what is cell-free DNA, CF DNA, or circulating tumor DNA, which is CT DNA. Remember that cell-free DNA can be in multiple different types. We will see that in a separate video. But here what we are discussing is a circulating tumor cell nuclear DNA, right? So now there are two arms where one arm is the standard management which we saw in the previous slide which is based on clinician's choice but blinded to CTDNA result and CTDNA informed management where if the CTDNA is negative the aim is to de-escalate chemotherapy and in circulating tumor DNA positive the aim is to escalate chemotherapy. Okay, Before deciding this informed management one cycle of pre-planned chemotherapy is allowed, okay? Now, de-escalation can be converting six months to three months or no chemo. Three months oxaliplatin plus 5-FU to three to six months only 5-FU. Six months oxali plus 5-FU can be three months oxali plus fluoropyrimidine or six months of only fluoropyrimidine. So basically, again, we are looking at eliminating oxaliplatin or reducing the duration of therapy. The primary analysis is of the CTDNA negative cohort and what they are going to look at is a three-year recurrence-free survival, treatment adherence and safety. So as we discussed, the de-escalation is to be done in CTDNA negative patients where if the pre-planned treatment is no chemo, it remains no chemo. You can change the various regimens that you use as per the de-escalation protocol. So three-month combination can become three-month of only single-agent therapy. Six-month combination can become three-month doublet or six-month single-agent therapy. So now 
key outcomes in CTDNA negative patients were that the three year recurrence free survival was 87% after de escalation. That means that even after de escalation in these patients, the recurrence risk was low. So the benefit of de-escalation was that there was a significantly reduced oxaliplatin exposure from 88.6% to 34.8% and there was significant reduction in side effects. So efficacy-wise, non-inferiority to standard care was not statistically proven, but the outcomes were very close and clinically comparable especially in the low risk that is T1 to T3 and node 1 staging subgroup, the outcomes of RFS were 91% versus 93.2%, which is very comparable, right? Similarly, three-year RFS in CTDNA negative group was 85.3% versus 88.1%. So basically, this supports individualized risk-adapted treatment discussions, especially when it comes to CTDNA negative stage 3 colon cancer. Now, when it is positive, we are looking at escalating treatment from no chemo, we convert to single agent, single agent to double agent, increase the duration or add a drug that is folfoxiri, increase the duration or add a drug, right? So that is what the escalation protocols are. High recurrence risk persisted despite escalating to standard adjuvant therapy. So remember that higher circulating tumor DNA burden means that there is a greater risk, recurrence risk. But escalation strategies did not improve the clearance of this DNA or three-year recurrence-free survival. So there was limited benefit from treatment intensification. And therefore, it was concluded that for this part of the trial, the trial was not giving positive outcomes and escalation was not helping. So this highlights the need for novel adjuvant or combination therapy in patients with CTDNA positive outcomes. You can see that the majority of the factors are favoring the standard management. Okay, so that is something that was seen, but the outcomes were clinically comparable. If you see the number at risk, more or less same in both the groups. So to conclude in CTDNA negative stage 3 colon cancer patients, there is a low recurrence risk and 3-year RFS is 87%. CTDNA guided de-escalation is feasible and the adherence and safety profile is good. There is reduced oxaliplatin exposure due to de-escalation and there is improved safety. As we discussed, the non-inferiority is not statistically proven, but the outcomes were clinically comparable. And when we come to low risk group, the outcomes were definitely better. On the other hand, escalation remains ineffective for CTDNA positive disease. Remember that it is a marker of a patient who will have a poor prognosis and escalation strategy still need innovation and validation. Now, other trials on this, we already had a dynamic 2 trial in 2022, which was in stage 2 colon cancer adjuvant therapy, where CTDNA guided approach reduced chemo use without compromising 2-year RFS. So basically, here you are trying to select patients for chemotherapy in stage 2. And we have already seen the dynamic 3 study in stage 3. There is also a circulate Japan Galaxy study which is stage 2 and 3, both where they are doing a post-operative CTDNA monitoring and CTDNA positivity strongly predicts recurrence. So basically suggesting that dynamic monitoring with CTDNA is useful for early relapse detection. There is also a circulate US trial again in stage 3 and high risk stage 2 where you are randomizing the patients to adjuvant therapy guided by CTDNA status Again, analyzing escalation and de-escalation strategy. There was a COBRA trial in stage 2, but this trial has been discontinued. So that is something that you need to know. So dynamic 2 and 3 circulate trial, Japan and US and COBRA trial are some of the trials on CTDNA when it comes to colon cancer. Thank you.